Order, and we now come to questions to the Minister of Enterprise, Trade and Investment. And can I inform members uh, that question nine has been withdrawn? I call Mr. Alban McGuinness. Uh, question number one, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, there have been a number of discussions uh, on this issue. Uh, should the referendum vote result in the UK leaving the EU, that would then trigger a period of negotiation on the terms of the future UK relationship with the EU. Um, during that period, across uh, the executive, they will need to be acutely aware as to the exit pathway that is being negotiated between the UK and the EU, as different pathways could have very different legal policy and practical implications for Northern Ireland. Thank you. And I'll call Mr McGuinness for a supplementary. Uh, uh, I thank the Minister for that response. Um, could I ask the Minister what plans he has to publish an assessment of the impact on the local economy of Northern Ireland uh, on the uh, exit from the European Union of Northern Ireland? Uh, would the Minister be in a position to praise the House whether in fact that will happen? Uh, because it would be of great assistance to help those who are undecided, perhaps even himself, uh, in relation to this matter. Mr. Speaker, members will be aware that an independent study by Oxford Economics assessing the economic implications of a EU exit across a wide range of potential scenarios, and I intend to publish that very soon. And I call Mr. Alistair Patterson for a supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, can the Minister provide an update on what discussions he has held with local stakeholders, such as the CBI, FSB, and manufacturing NI, so that as Economy Minister he remains able to represent the views of local business leaders? Well, I have met uh, on a number of occasions with the Federation of Small Business. I have met uh, Mr. Gavigan of the CBI. And most recently, I was in uh, Bush Mills with the uh, Chamber of Commerce and Anne McGregor. And interestingly, at that particular function, uh, Anne McGregor said in her conversations with members, uh, most members, the majority of members, were for vote leave. Speaker, and on that same issue, uh, on your various. Um, trips abroad, investment, investment trips. Uh, how many potential investors have actually said to you, Minister, that they would like to see Northern Ireland outside of the European Union? This question was asked, actually, uh, of our largest single investor in Northern Ireland in the United States Consulate in Belfast, and they asked uh, Andrew O'Brien the question. Andrew answered it very clearly that uh, he had nobody saying, uh, no knowledge that people from the United States would stop investing uh, in Northern Ireland purely on the basis of the situation within the EU. I think in all of my trips that we have done, uh, the three things that come across very clearly is that Northern Ireland is one of the best talent pools uh, in the world, that the costs of doing business in Northern Ireland are somewhat 84 per cent of doing business in the rest of the UK, and the fact that from the 1st of April 2018 we will have a corporation tax rate of 12.5 per cent, the most competitive rate of corporation tax in Western Europe. Those are the three factors that seem to be being taken hold of uh, from Asia uh, to America right throughout uh, the Middle East, and it is on that basis that I think Northern Ireland will continue to grow its economy. Thank you. And comes to Jim Allister. Mr. Gray, it would in fact be liberating for our trade and for our enterprise to be free of the shackles of the EU. Instantly, we would be liberated from EU regulation, which even the Commission has acknowledged costs 4 per cent of GDP, and of course we would be freed to form our own trade deals with the growth parts of the world rather than tied to the declining EU. Would the Minister agree, therefore, it is a positive vision for Northern Ireland and the United Kingdom to leave the EU? 
There is uh, certainly uh, a number of views on the subject. I mean, there has been an accusation that has been put forward that uh, despite the UK being a net contributor, uh, Northern Ireland uh, is a winner, uh, that we actually get a better return uh, than we put in. Uh, people know my own party's position, but I actually think that argument that is put forward uh, that we get more out than we put in doesn't stand up to scrutiny. You know, if we take regional funds, out of which we get dedicated peace money that no one else gets, we are still uh, operating at a loss. Uh, Open Europe is estimating that for this pot we get one pound back for every one pound fifty-eight we put in. And for 2016, the Office of Budget Responsibility estimates a net UK contribution of nine and a half billion pounds. Overall, it's forecasting an increase of £3.1 billion in total contributions in the next five years. Now, imagine hard-working families will not be any better off financially than they were before that reform process started. Thank you. And I call Mr David Hildage. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Question two. Invest Northern Ireland has already begun to promote the planned reduction in corporation tax uh, through targeted communications and marketing activity, digital advertising, print and media partnerships, events, one-to-one -one meetings and the showcasing of our capability at key international events and exhibitions. And I call Mr. Hildage for a supplement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And perhaps the Minister could outline to us the benefits of low corporation tax for, for not only foreign investors but also for, for local companies investing in Northern Ireland? Well, the Northern Ireland Executive's uh, commitment to reducing the rate of corporation tax to 12.5 per cent from 2018 can be a major stimulus for our economy. The research uh, from The Economist is showing that we can create in excess of 30,000 additional jobs and that we can grow our economy by some 10 per cent over 15 years. The, our attention is now how we turn uh, to maximising the potential that exists for this new economic lever. We are trying to get as much market insight as we can into new FDI markets uh, that a lower rate will open doors to what types and sectors of investments that we can attract and the parts of the world that we should be targeting. We'll work alongside uh, the Department of Employment and Learning to look at what skills we can uh, to ensure it. But if we add the most competitive rate of corporation tax to a very low cost base, estimated to be something like 48 per cent of the cost of London, 84 uh, per cent of the cost of doing business in the UK, and you add to the fact that people come for our costs, but I can, I can give you something that impressed me, and this is from Tom Hall, the Vice President of International Technology and Operations at Allstate. Our experience in Northern Ireland far exceeded our expectations. We came here originally for the cost savings. We find ourselves staying for the people and the talent that is available. As they said to me, we came for your costs, but we stayed for your people. Thank you. And I call Mr. Oliver McMullen. Can I ask the Minister, would the Minister agree with me that targets related to regional opportunities need to be incorporated into, into Invest NI's new push for foreign direct investment? Uh, no. Uh, what happened was, and his, member, uh, his party was a member of the programme for government, and what we set forward at that programme for government was that we would look at Northern Ireland as a whole. And that's the target that we set, uh, Invest Northern Ireland. And they vastly exceeded uh, their targets in terms of jobs that were created, uh, in terms of research and development, in terms of the Jobs Growth Fund. And I don't think I could ever find myself in a position where I would uh, turn away business, jobs and investment from Northern Ireland purely on the basis that they wouldn't go to a geographical location. And I think it would be a very foolish person that would. And I call Mr. John McAllister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, the Minister will be aware of a recent um, survey by KPMG about executive attitudes. Um, the UK ranks second highest uh, in Europe, mainly around political stability, macroeconomic stability, uh, and of course, uh, access to the single market. 
if he took Northern Ireland, how does he think Northern Ireland would fare on such a survey? Well, I think if anybody is looking at Northern Ireland today, one of the biggest surveys that business looks towards is stability. And I recently did a conference with Professor James Michael Queens uh, on ma manufacturing, and he put up a graphic behind me that showed uh, United Nations figures to show uh, how safe Northern Ireland was, and in particular, uh, Belfast was ranked as the second safest city in the world in terms of safety. We're second only to Tokyo, so we're, we're there in terms of stability and safety. Uh, secondly, we are also there in terms of costs. Uh, the member will know the other major surveys, uh, Financial Times, that Northern Ireland is the most entrepreneurial region in the United Kingdom. The business surveys that show of any other part of the United Kingdom, Northern Ireland is the place to grow your business quickly and quickest to uh, £1 million. Northern Ireland is the financial technology capital of the world, according to the Financial Times. Those are the surveys that we are looking to, and I think it behoves all of us in this House who set in the programme of government our economy as the central priority. And we look at how we have exceeded every target in terms of job creation, research and development, jobs growth fund, to see how we can continue to accelerate the progress that's made. Well, Mr. Robin Swan. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Minister, in your earlier answer, you referred to foreign investors coming because they come for the costs. The Enterprise Bill currently going through Westminster. This moment in time, we'll see a tax of 0.5 per cent punting companies' wage bills if they have a wage bill of over more, more than £3 million. How will that affect Northern Ireland's attractiveness compared to the Republic of Ireland, which won't have such a tax in a company's wage bill? Well, I think there are many, many challenges uh, to us, and the member has raised one of them. But the reality is, uh, previously we used to boast up until 2014 that we attracted more foreign direct investment than any other part of the United Kingdom, with the exception of London. And everybody said to us, well, look, City of London, Jonathan, you, you can never exceed uh, London. You've reached your high water mark. But yet, in April 20, or somewhere around August 2014, approximately, Northern Ireland actually overtook the rest of the United Kingdom in attracting more foreign direct investment uh, per person uh, than any other part of the United Kingdom. Now, what I find most encouraging, and I was sitting down with some recent uh, executives from Citigroup just last week. Remember, they came to put 369 jobs into uh, Northern Ireland today. They sit at over uh, 2,000. And what I uh, was looking at in particular with them was the research that is showing that 80% of all the companies that have come to Northern Ireland, foreign direct investment, have subsequently reinvested. And that, to me, is the ultimate test. When people come and invest, they see our costs, they see the quality of the workforce, they see the very low attrition rate because we have got very loyal uh, working people, and they see into the future uh, the growth that there is in Northern Ireland. I think with 80 per cent of all foreign direct investment reinvesting in Northern Ireland, that's the ultimate vote of confidence that we want to share. Thank you. And I call Mr. Edmund Pitts. Number three. There are a range of uh, initiatives that the department is doing to work and promote and to assist uh, local manufacturing. Uh, companies that are involved in manufacturing now employ over 80,000 people, and the sector remains hugely important to the Northern Ireland economy. I call Mr. Pitts for a supplement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank the Minister for his answer. Uh, our, our First Minister, who had many years uh, in, in the job that uh, Mr. Bell now holds, uh, will be out leading in the United States this week, uh, selling uh, Northern Ireland uh, and the job prospects, uh, uh, to, to, or the, the, the job potential uh, to uh, businesses in the United States. Over the course of, of, of the next number of years, obviously the, the corporation tax is, is going to be significantly important. But what are we planning in association with corporation tax? What are we planning with our training, employment, 
our universities, particularly as the department comes together, and how we can ensure that there is an absolutely enhanced package uh, to put out there to business for Northern Ireland being the best place to invest? Well, the, the first thing I'm doing in terms of Northern Ireland being the best place to invest is I, I bring companies uh, to Northern Ireland and I, I, I speak to them at the end of their journey. Their journey starts with some of the successful companies, the All States, the Cities, the Baker McKenzie's, the Allen and Overy's, the list could go on. And we let them talk to those people first uh, and then we talk about the support that we can give uh, in government. Um, and then the member is absolutely correct. We turn to education. Um, according to another major survey, Northern Ireland is the best performing education system for primary maths in Europe and the sixth best uh, in the world. The member raised uh, the question uh, of skills. Um, more than 8,500 people uh, graduate annually with business related degrees from Northern Ireland, where we have two world class universities that the member mentioned. And I think we should know. Note that Queen's University uh, in Belfast is over 100 years old. It's a member of the Russell Group of 24 leading research intensive universities and ranked in the top 1% of universities worldwide. Uh, Ulster University, with its four campuses, uh, catering for some 27,000 students, uh, includes one of the largest provisions in computing in the UK and Ireland, and it's ranked in the world's top 100. Uh, young universities. So bringing together world-leading research where we are recognized in technology-related university research centers. I'm thinking of the uh, Systems Research Center at Ulster University or the Institute of e Electronics, Communications and Information Technology at Queen's. And we should note that over 70% of Northern Ireland's university research activity is world-leading or internationally excellent according to the research excellence framework. Those are the structures that we combine with costs, talent and the most competitive rate of corporation tax to build Northern Ireland forward. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I, I note with interest the Minister's responses thus far. Manufacturing and I have consistently asked for a manufacturing strategy. However, like them, I am deeply disappointed that successive Deadly ministers have overlooked this key sector. With manufacture being a key employer in my constituency, will the minister give a commitment that he will ensure that the next programme for government contains a pledge for such a strategy? Well, if the member had have been listening in the last couple of weeks, he would have heard me telling the Assembly that we were placing manufacturing at the heart of our refreshed economic approach. And while the member may be disappointed, while the member's party was in the executive, they agreed that with a programme of government that placed manufacturing with all the other uh, parts as part of one economic strategy. We didn't go down an economic strategy for financial services. We didn't go down an economic strategy for food and drink. We didn't go down an economic strategy for technology. We put them all together into one economic strategy, which his party agreed with. Now, since 2011 to 2012 to September 2015, Invest Northern Ireland has provided some £255 million of assistance to firms that are involved in manufacturing in Northern Ireland across a range of sectors. 16.7 million, or 7% more than was provided to service-based firms. So in terms of the support, that helped promote over 12,000 new manufacturing jobs. 3,600 of these in the last financial year are providing future opportunities uh, for those that are affected by some of the very challenging situation we find ourselves with job losses. But having topped 80,000 manufacturing jobs in Northern Ireland and seen in the past a growth rate greater than any other part of the United Kingdom, you can see why I believe in Northern Ireland manufacturing and why it should be part of the refresh strategy. Question four, Speaker. With uh, your permission, Mr. Speaker, I will answer uh, questions four and seven together.
There is one petroleum license currently operational in Northern Ireland, petroleum license PL110, for which Infrastrata PLC uh, is the license holder. Petroleum license PL110 was not extended. Mr. McNary for sub uh, I trust the Minister will agree there is a no-brainer uh, with energy gold under our own feet not to use it. Uh, could he say, in light of his previous answers, uh, what new funding uh, his department could bid for uh, after the 23rd of June for the development of energy? Well, what we are doing is we are working very closely with the Department of Energy and Climate Change. In everything that I have done in terms of energy, what I have sought to do is to ensure that Northern Ireland and its people get the best return for the investment that they put in, that they get the best return in terms of security of supply, and they get the best return in terms of cost. Now, as DEC has changed its position uh, on a number of occasions, I have also changed mine. I think it is a very foolish person that does not change their mind when the facts change. But having hit uh, all of our renewable targets and having seen uh, energy prices in Northern Ireland quite significantly uh, low uh, compared to other years, but also in recent times you'll have seen the list of companies that are reducing uh, their energy prices. What is key for my department is to maximise every opportunity uh, that we have, both to be good stewards of the earth and to look towards uh, where we can attract support uh, for renewables, but also to make sure our manufacturing industry uh, gets the most competitive rate in terms that allows them to stay competitive and to export more. Thank you. And I call Mr. Phil Flanagan. Thank you, Mr. Flanagan. Thank you, Mr. Flanagan. Thank the Minister for his answer. Um, whilst the, the licence itself has not been extended, does the Minister accept that the decision to extend, to extend Infrastata's uh, time frame for a work programme sets a very dangerous precedent? Um, on fracking, particularly given the fact that Infrastata failed to meet its original work programme. And, and can the Minister outline why he feels it was appropriate to extend this time frame and give such a company such latitude to drill boreholes using a novel uh, form of drilling so close to public water reservoirs? Well, I think the member should reflect very carefully on, on, on what he is saying there, because it, in terms of the variation of licence, it is not true that in whatever way uh, it is expressed that Infrastrata has been given more time by Deddy to drill at Woodburn when the company had quite clearly failed to meet its original work programme targets that have been alleged. That's the allegation. I was content uh, to agree to a variation of the work programme of Petroleum Licence PL110, and that was based on work that was carried out by the licensee to date to a highly professional standard, including but not limited to the acquisition to the processing, the reprocessing, and the interpretation of existing and new 2D seismic reflection data, and the carrying out of various studies, mapping, and remodelling. The extent to which the factors that were impacting on the licensee's capacity to drill were outside the licensee's uh, control. Uh, it's important to state, and the member has raised the issue of fragging, that my department has not issued any licenses or permits for hydro hydraulic fracturing, high volume hydraulic fracturing. No company in Northern Ireland has been given permission to frack. Infrastrata has made it clear that the drilling in Woodburn Forest does not involve fracking, and a no fracking clause has been included in Infrastrata PLC's lease with Northern Ireland Water. You want to call Mr. Gordon Lyon. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and can I thank the, the Minister uh, for what he has said already? Because there is an awful lot of concern uh, in Woodburn uh, at the minute around this, and a lot of that concern has come from the fact that there's been a lot of misinformation uh, that has been spread, and uh, an awful lot of people are, are under the illusion that fracking is taking place. Uh, I'm very pleased that he has already confirmed to me that there is no fracking taking place uh, in this uh, area. And um, can, d does he believe that this sort of uh, misinformation uh, is very useful? I think actually misinformation, as, as we all know, can be very uh, dangerous. And I thank Mr. Lance. He's been on to me on a number of occasions uh, with concerns that have been raised. And let, let me tell you, you know, specifically uh, from the dispatch box, that my department has not issued 
any license or permit for high-volume high hydraulic fracturing. We haven't done it, and no company has been given permission in Northern Ireland to frack. As both I and the previous Steady Minister have indicated on many occasions, high-volume hydraulic fracturing is a novel and it's a controversial issue and is such a matter for the executive as a whole to decide upon, should the time come. And I call Mr. Daniel McCross. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, uh, and thank you to the Minister for his uh, questions or answers so far. Uh, Minister, how many of the sites being explored under licence are anticipated to require unconventional extraction techniques uh, such as hydraulic uh, fracturing? I think there's always a danger, perhaps, of writing your question before you've heard the answers. But let me be clear that uh, what we are saying in terms of high-volume hydraulic fracturing, it is novel and it is a controversial issue. And as such, should that time come, it will be for the executive as a whole to decide upon. Thank you. Mr. Roy Bay. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Minister has said that he has not uh, extended, he has varied the licence, but that of course will have the effect of extending the operation and will enable uh, drilling and the associated chemicals to be located within the water catchment area of Woodburn Dams. So my question to the Minister, uh, given that high quality water supply is not only important to people, but to local manufacturing companies, what discussions has, has the Minister had with other departments to satisfy himself that there is no danger to the public water supply should something go amiss during this drilling process in which a considerable number of chemicals will be injected into the ground? Well, again, the uh, issue has been raised. Uh, the Department and the other departments of the Executive, I understand, uh, and they have answered for themselves on these matters from the dispatch box, have already indicated that, obviously, uh, if there was any risk uh, to the water supply, uh, action uh, would be taken, and we are satisfied that those levels uh, of risk, uh, with the information that we have, uh, are not there. And I think the member should reflect that there is a potential benefit to Northern Ireland of having the prospectivity of the licence area established through the drilling, because the development of Northern Ireland's indigenous oil and gas resources could help to maintain security of supply and could bring both direct and indirect economic benefit to Northern Ireland. Thank you. And I call Mr. Stewart Dick. Thank you, <coughs> Mr. Speaker. Can, Minister, can I ask you, in, in respect of this issue of uh, drilling at Woodburn, uh, and um, I think it's a bit of a smokescreen to suggest that people actually believe that there's fracking, go, hydraulic fracking going on. The reality is we know this is conventional drilling, and the protesters know it's conventional drilling. Um, <coughs> you talk about security of supply in respect of fuel. Can we be guaranteed security of supply when it comes to clean, fresh drinking water? For the answer I gave just some moments ago. Comes to Crystal. Question five. Uh, energy policy is driven by finding the best balance between sustainability, cost and supply. That's what we refer to as the energy trilemma. There are no immediate concerns about security of electricity supply in the short uh, or the medium term. Uh, my department supports the delivery of the north-south interconnector and new market trading arrangements as measures to ensure long-term uh, issues of security of supply. Well, Mr. Chris Little first. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Can I ask the Minister what his department has done to reduce energy costs for companies in Northern Ireland and how successful it has been compared to other European regions? Well, we are in a situation where um, we, we look at both recent electricity and gas tariff reductions. 10.3% reduction in domestic and small business regulated electricity tariffs. Prices that are 16% below the GB Big Six average. Approximately 25% lower than the average in the Republic of Ireland. And 7% lower than the EU15 average. I go specifically SSE electricity standard domestic tariff reduced from two by 10.3% from the 1st of June 2016, uh, typical annual savings for domestic customers of £50. Uh, Electricity Ireland is to cut 
domestic electricity tariffs by 10% from the 21st of March 2016. That should give a typical annual saving of approximately £59. SSE electricity, standard gas tariff, Greater Belfast cut by 10.2% from the 1st of April 2016. Another typical annual saving of £50. Uh, Firmus Energy has confirmed a tariff reduction of up to 9.75% for Belfast customers from the 1st of April. And well, concluding this point, Mr. Speaker, I also welcome Firmus's announcement of a 7.7% reduction in retail gas tariffs for households and small businesses in the 10 towns license area. And again, that's also effective from the 1st of April. That brings us to the, uh, the end of the period for listed questions. And we now move on to topical questions. And I call Mr. Cahill O'Hashin. Uh, could I ask the Minister what are Delhi doing to support the enterprise zone in Korean? Well, the, a number of initiatives uh, have been taken uh, in that area that, that we have visited, uh, not least of which has been the support uh, for the data centre. Uh, could I ask the Minister further then what are Deti doing to explore the possibilities uh, for the expansion of the Kelvin project and broadband reception and speeds in the Korean and wider East Area area? Well, I have been visiting uh, the area most recently at the invitation of uh, George uh, Robinson um, and we visited uh, a number of specific projects. We obviously met in connection with the uh, data centre uh, that is there which has the potential to be huge in terms of future needs in terms of data. We have been working also with uh, BT and other bodies, and I visited uh, the business park in, in, in Lima Valley, uh, to see how we can see where we can prioritise, particularly for business customers uh, in business parks, broadband access. And I call Ms. Michaela Boy. Uh, Minister, I am aware that there has been recent expressions of interest in the Invest NI business park uh, within Straban. Can you assure me, Minister, that everything that has been done that can necessarily be done to bring those uh, expressions of interest to fruition as soon as quickly as is possible? Gormagut? Yes, I, I, and I will, and I am happy to meet uh, here in, in relation. Uh, to what we are doing. We have a fantastic team uh, in Invest Northern Ireland. I only say well done because they did very well and they outperformed uh, many of the targets that we have set very significantly. And the member makes a, a, a number of good points uh, in terms of what can be offered in her um, particular region. Um, in the last number of months, Invest Northern Ireland has had discussions with a number of companies regarding their interests specifically in locating to Straban uh, Business Park. And I'll keep a watch and brief on that in terms of maximising uh, everything that we can do to ensure success. Ms Boyle for a supplementary. Thank you, Ken Collier. Uh, Minister, given that there is high unemployment levels and high levels of social deprivation in Straban, um, can you uh, elaborate on what work that yourself and your department are doing in conjunction with uh, Invest NI to promote Straban as a location for possible investors, given that there is such a large space there uh, for investors to come to? Margaret. Well, we are, we are looking towards land, particularly within the Straban Business Park, and it is available to qualifying businesses that have an approved economic development project and an immediate demonstrable land need. What we do, and I'm sure the member will appreciate that, in the negotiations that we are currently having, which she alluded to in her first question, there are uh, a number of companies that are looking particularly to Straban Business Park. And I can tell her we will give all of the evidence of why it's a quality place for which uh, to invest, as well as the general uh, information that, that we give to people in terms of uh, prime office rents, in terms of education, uh, in terms of businesses that can perform here uh, on the world stage, and in terms of many of the endorsements that we get, particularly from foreign direct investment um, in Northern Ireland. Let me give you just another one, uh, if I may. Surin Gupta, Executive Vice President, uh, again of all state technology and operations. Every day in Northern Ireland, 
We save half a million dollars. As a result of locating in Northern Ireland 15 years ago, Allstate has saved over a billion dollars. Now, what we'll be saying to all businesses uh, that are looking anywhere in Northern Ireland, those are the types of savings that are available. Come and invest with us. We'll give you the best people. We'll give you the best costs. And from the 1st of April, we'll give you the best rate of corporation tax in Western Europe. And call Mr. Gordon Dunn. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank the Minister for his answers. Can the Minister give us an update on the campaign to promote the North-South interconnector and what sort of priority he sees the matter? Well, I, I essentially see it as a key priority. In fact, I think for Northern Ireland it's something that failure is not an option on. We need it and we need it now. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and thank the Minister. Can the Minister uh, give us some indications as to what potential savings there are for businesses and what the long-term security of supply would, would develop as a result of the establishment of the North-South Interconnector? I think the first uh, figure uh, that has been shown and has debated is over a period uh, you could be looking at, at a savings um, of somewhere in the region of 20 million. Uh, it is critical and I do think and I've been joined by many of the other bodies and I've said this wherever I've gone from Sony to all the different bodies that I speak to in terms of energy. Uh, it is time that this issue was addressed. It is critical to our long-term security of supply and it can deliver savings and it can deliver savings quickly and for members in this house who are coming to me including from my own area with very justifiable concerns regarding the costs uh, of electricity for manufacturing I would refer to them first of all to the north-south interconnector as a key means to achieve savings and strengthen Northern Ireland's long-term security of supply. Can the Minister confirm to me that his department has received a report from Oxford Economics on the economic implications of the North on a Brexit? We are to receive that report. Mr. McMullen, for a And will the Minister uh, assure me that the, this uh, report will be published upon its completion? Yes, I can. Well, Carmagadé, I can't hardly could just ask the Minister what he is doing and his department is doing to assist the local manufacturing sector in Armagh City and District. And I'll just refer to a small firm, SFM engineering firm, who employ 40 people and can double that workforce with a little help from Invest NA and his own department. Could he like to respond to that, please? Well, if the member comes to me uh, with the details, um, I can tell you. If he's talking about doubling the workforce, he get a very willing reception from this department. Supplementary. Gormagat, and, and I thank the Minister for his response. I actually have wrote to the Minister and, and I will, after this question, they await his response. But I just want to ask the Minister, following on from that, uh, just could he give his assessment of uh, the recent closure of Camden Glass Factory outside Armagh with the loss of 65 jobs and what his department has done in relation to trying to relocate some of those jobs and assist those people who left for the, for the bare minimum redundancy package. Would the Minister like to respond to that, please? Or yeah. well, uh, <coughs> Mr Speaker, the member did in his original question tell me which company uh, he was referring to, and I, I can't look into a crystal ball. Um, where there is the opportunity um, to increase manufacturing jobs, he will have heard me say that in my work uh, with all the bodies, including manufacturing in Northern Ireland, uh, my manufacturing and energy advisory group that are to report to me, all of that is targeted towards making manufacturing in Northern Ireland uh, so competitive uh, that it can compete uh, against the rest of the, the world in terms of exports. What we've done specifically in regions is look towards how we can increase the skills level and how we can reduce the uh, particular energy costs that are there. We've brought the unions together. We've brought the uh, power companies together. We've brought 
We have backed them up with some of the best evidence from Ulster University Centre for Economic Policy, and we have allowed that Manufacturing and Energy Advisory Group uh, to be chaired uh, by, I think, the fifth largest energy user uh, in Northern Ireland. Because I actually believe in, in Northern Ireland, and I believe in our manufacturing. I mean, at the end of the day, Lord Kelvin, the uh, father of modern science, was born here. John Dunlop invest, invented the pneumatic tyre. Harry Ferguson patented the technology that led to the modern tractor. And the portable defibrillator, just to give you another example, was uh, by Professor Frank Pantridge. I think what we have got to do is to continue to ensure that Northern Ireland continues to compete against the best of the world in terms of manufacturing. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Given the Minister's uh, move uh, tomorrow to uh, bring forward the Renewable Obligation Closure Order, uh, can the Minister assure this House that Northern Ireland bill payers will not be burdened by what could be uh, a Northern Ireland socialised rock or incentive scheme? Yes, well, um, the member will know that what we have done uh, consistently has been to try to ensure that the Northern Ireland bill pair uh, is protected as much as we possibly can. I do have individuals that come to me with specific projects, and they're very well-meaning. And personally, uh, I found myself in my heart sympathising with them in the situations they find themselves in. But I would ask anybody in Northern Ireland to realise that I have a responsibility to ensure both for the business sector and the domestic uh, household user that they get the best value that they possibly can. At every stage along this process, as DEC has changed the facts, I have changed uh, my policy to deliver the cheapest uh, and most cost-effective energy to both businesses and domestic customers. Thank you. Given the Minister's moves to try and protect consumers in Northern Ireland and bill payers, given the moves that uh, uh, has been made in Westminster, what moves has the Minister made or how can he influence the programme for government uh, in the leading days, coming days and weeks to try and assist in bringing our bills down in Northern Ireland, particularly for industry and commerce? I appreciate uh, the member's uh, question because it does reflect the nature of some of the choices that I have had to make, uncomfortable choices that I have had to make as Deputy Minister. I mean, I, I, I was receiving some of costs that could have put household bills up by, by £50 uh, for every available house. I mean, as DEC changed the policy, I have acted to change at all times. Uh, to ensure that energy, which is a significant challenge, as a member says, for the manufacturing sector. And our job is to put those policies, the strategies that are in place, uh, to support manufacturing. Uh, but I would also say finding a solution to energy costs starts within manufacturing itself. I work very closely with manufacturing uh, Northern Ireland. As I said earlier, I established the advisory group that had the membership from the industry the business representative organisations, the trade unions and the leading academics. And I'm looking forward to, as the member says, using their advice in future discussions in terms of a programme for government on energy cost reduction measures. Uh, and I believe that listening to industry, as the member says, allows companies, they're the people best placed to find effective energy strategies and solutions. And I do believe that when I get the uh, report from the Energy and Manufacturing Advisory Group, I'm very confident uh, that we can offer constructive solutions that should be, uh, be part of material discussions for the new programme for government. And question seven has been uh, withdrawn in accordance with the appropriate protocol. So I call Mr. Patsy McGlone. And Mr. Patsy McGlone is not in this place. And question nine has also been withdrawn within the appropriate uh, protocol, so I call Mr Stuart Dixon. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, unusual to get as far as question ten, but I do have a, minute, a question for you, Minister. Minister, um, when companies in East Antrim like um, Caterpillar 
make announcements with regards to job losses. Uh, we see a great flurry of activity um, directed at them to ensure that as much as possible is done to assist those companies. Can you tell us what you have done since the last uh, uh, job loss announcement was made for Caterpillar? Well, what I have consistently done, whether the job losses are there or, or in elsewhere, and we have seen some of those big challenges, is my department sits down with uh, Minister Farry. Uh, most recently, we have done that immediately on hearing. In fact, we have had sometimes pre-meetings on the basis of what is speculated that is going to occur. Now, my first uh, priority is to try to ensure that those members have got the skills necessary to apply for new manufacturing jobs that are coming on stream. And I referred earlier uh, in the past financial year, we looked towards some well over 3,000 manufacturing jobs coming on stream. So what I try to ensure, first of all, is that the members who have the skills are, first of all, accredited, because many of these members will uh, have gone through schemes and work but don't have the formal certification. So we work together to ensure with the regional colleges that they get the necessary certification. Secondly, uh, in many of the cases, what we try to do is bring to those bodies the different skills that are needed out there and try to match them against the skills that uh, currently exist. And the third thing that we try to do is actually just attract more manufacturing jobs to uh, Northern Ireland, and you've seen the significant investment that Invest Northern Ireland has put into bringing manufacturing jobs to Northern Ireland. You will have seen, yes, there are challenges. I will not use the word crisis because the uh, manufacturing industry itself has asked me not to use the word crisis. I will reflect the fact that we have more than 80,000 manufacturing jobs in Northern Ireland today, which is the greatest time we've been there since uh, 2008. And what we will do is ensure manufacturing goes into the heart of the refreshed economic strategy. Thank you, Minister. Uh, time is up. And we now move